Preparing the surface is very important for any artist. Um, your painting will have a different look depending on how you prepare your own canvas. Uh, the canvas that I'm going to prepare for you is how I want this particular piece to be done, but everything can be modified to get your canvas uh, having a different effect. The two major things are how rough or smooth do you want the canvas and how absorbent or not absorbing you want that surface. Um, personally I like to, when I'm preparing my own canvas, to uh, stop the absorbency of the, uh, the gesso by adding a little bit of oil based primer, uh, but I'll talk about that a bit later on. Okay, you may well have used before uh, factory based or factory stretched uh, canvases which are very easy, take them out of the cellophane, start working on them. Uh, but what I would recommend with any anything like this is is also uh, preparing your own surface for them. Um, the surface that will come with it will be a very basic uh, sort of thin coat of gesso on it. Uh, but what you may want to do is maybe smooth that off uh, by adding a few coats of your own gesso, sanding down between coats, and uh, possibly adding. Uh, an oil primer on the top. The difference between your gesso based uh, primer and your oil primer is that oil primer just dries uh, a little bit less absorbent um, and the absorbency of your primer uh, is important. Um, what I like to do is finish off my ground with an oil primer uh, because oil primer being less absorbent than gesso primer you get less of a thing called sinking in. Uh, in oil painting uh, when your colours are talked about as sinking in uh, they tend to mean that it dulls, it dulls the colour. What the gesso is doing is absorbing some of that colour uh, instead of this, the colour sitting on the surface of the, the, the canvas. These canvases, great but I, I've yet to come across pre-stretched canvas that has the qualities that is able to be achieved if you stretch your own. So this is what we're going to do today, we're going to stretch your own canvas and I've got a metre square canvas here to stretch uh, and I've also got some materials that I'll show you that you'll need. One staple gun, a pair of pliers for taking the staples off should you need to, one Stanley blade to cut the canvas or a pair of scissors would do. Okay, I've got a delivery here of some materials. I use an online shop, uh, greatart.co.uk. Uh, let's have a look and see what we've got. Uh, these types of brushes are great to keep for priming your canvas, but also at the end varnishing your canvas as well. Uh, you want nice cheap brushes so that the varnish and sometimes the gesso can, can really ruin these brushes. Also sort of DIY brushes, things like that. Good for gesso in the canvas. Gesso that I use, just gesso primer, and this is acrylic based, and I've got acrylic binder, oil painting primer, primer. Okay, stretching the canvas. Uh, got my material, my canvas, which is uh, just big enough to go across my stretchers, which are one meter square. Anything from about eighty centimeters is going to need a crossbar. Uh, and the crossbar is just really to give support so that this doesn't bow when the tension of the canvas pulls that down and it's not going to bow this stretcher uh, on the outside. So I've got two crossbars because two of my sides exceed the sort of 80 centimeter. Canvas is then cut to a size which will allow fold over at the back to be just well wider than the width of the stretcher and also you need to make sure certainly if it's the first time you've stretched anything up that the uh, the lip is on the canvas side so the canvas will pass through that lip and this little lip is going to separate the canvas from this edge here if you stretch it with your canvas on this side quite obviously you're going to get the imprint of the back of the stretcher there. Okay, so it's important that we stretch the canvas on this side. I'm going to make my first uh, 
my first staple right in the center and the way that we're going to do this is we're going to staple the center of this side then the center of the other and then the centers on the other two sides so we start at the middle and then work our way to the side adding one each side here and one each side there one each side there and we work out from the middle and swap the sides every time and that is just to make sure that the tension goes out from the middle of the canvas Okay, uh, now at the stage where I've got three staples on each side, what we do is just make sure that we're pulling it out from the middle and down, and then hold and staple. Okay, there we have it. Um, pretty much done. I, I'm just going to show you the corners here. I've got one more corner to do, and I'm going to do that uh, along with you. So I'll just show you one of the corners. Fold over one side, like that, and then this is stapled, and then this piece gets folded. And I like to have it so that one fold appears. acrylic binder that I'm going to start with. Okay, this stuff dries clear, it's a bit like PVA, it seals the surface and uh, you know, you'd be fine to put, start off with the gesso ground, uh, but I, I like working this way just so that the gesso uh, moves better onto the surface. Uh, you tend to use less of the gesso if you've got a less absorbent surface to work on. Okay, that's our binder layer done and it's uh, completed right to the edges. What I also wanted to show you while I had the, uh, the, binder, the binder out is the, um, quite often in the sketchbook, I'll work with oil pastels which can imprint a lot on the other side of the page. This medium's quite good uh, for doing glazes in acrylic. There's a, an oil painting sketch that I've done here and you can see to the touch it's uh, it's kind of it just comes off so what we can do is apply a coat of binder and uh, this is going to dry clear and it will also dry slightly glossy and it will protect it okay with the binder dry now uh, it's now apparent that I've lost a bit of uh, the tension in the canvas uh, so at this stage um, to prevent the gesso going on and actually touching uh, the crossbar in the back I'm just going to knock in the wedges So now it's time for my acrylic gesso. Uh, I'm going to apply it with the same large brush uh, in the same fashion by pouring it straight onto the canvas and then manipulating with the, with the brush rather than try to scoop it out of a small container with a large brush. Okay, I'm going to take you down to the, uh, I, sh I 
shallow level so that you can see just what's happening in the surface of this painting. Uh, what I want to happen is a lot of the brush strokes uh, of the gesso going onto the canvas to remain. Um, and then once it's dry, I'm going to calm them down with uh, a little bit of sanding. Um, what the sanding also does is you'll be able to see some uh, little gritty bits of the gesso. Uh, sometimes when your gesso sits there you get little hardened bits that just raise up from the surface uh, and sanding will get rid of that. On top of this will be another coat of, uh, of acrylic gesso uh, and that's going to be mixed a little bit with water. Uh, just so that it's not as textured as the underneath surface. Uh, then I'm going to apply some of my oil painting primer. If you want to work on an absorbent surface, you wouldn't bother applying the oil painting primer. You just paint straight onto the gesso. Uh, your oil primer will dry really smooth if you add a little bit of turpentine to it. As opposed to a water-based pr gesso primer, what an oil primer is going to do is going to dry by oxidation. Uh, that means that there won't be, it won't dry like uh, water-based uh, paint. Uh, water-based paints which dry by evaporation. Uh, the liquid leaves the paint. What happens here is that the liquid doesn't leave the paint necessarily. Uh, what it does is it just hardens and that makes it a shell, uh, like a hardened shell. Uh, that makes it a little bit more glossy uh, and a little bit less absorbent and that's what's happening with this.